Uh, people keep asking questions. They don't understand. I'm talking about my home life. Then I'm talking about my home place. I want to go back one more time. And they said they didn't think I really had a home place. Well, here's the deal, folks. Uh, from the time I was born, almost from the time I was born, my mom and dad, I was born in 41. My mom and dad moved to Norfolk, Virginia in 42 or 43, I'm not sure which. That was during World War II. And he went to work at the shipyard. He was a welder and I think he was a ship fitter or something like that. But he worked at the shipyard. That's why he didn't go into the, they didn't draft him or anything. Uh, he he uh, uh, worked at the shipyard. We lived in a, I guess you could call it a housing part. They built it, they built it in a hurry and it was for all the uh, Navy personnel and and and, and uh, people that worked at the shipyard and stuff. And it was called Broad Creek Village, and uh, This has been an almost do nothing day. I made a mistake. Well, where in the world did that come from? It's a printer. Um, I had to go pick up my baby at the school. It was a half day, and I it, I didn't realize it. I almost missed it. So I rushed out of here. I didn't even have time to put my shoes on. I was in my sock feet. And I didn't get my hat on. And coming back from Picking Jay up, I come by this place called Phoenix Wood Products. I used to get a lot of wood and building materials from them, and they'd set out a whole pallet of pieces of plywood that I needed to make my thing for my table. And I was gonna have to go buy a sheet. And lo and behold, they had that pallet full sitting out there. And of course, I didn't have my camera. And this stuff, I, it just burned me up and I got Jaden out there. I told him to see if he could make the video with my, with my uh, cell phone. And of course he could and I can't carry all this. At one time. But I used to get a lot of this stuff from uh <laughs> from this place. And if I was thinking about trying to get somebody to go over there with a pickup truck and get a hold the the pallets are full. There's Two or three hundred pieces on a pallet. And I used to make bird houses and stuff out of this stuff. So I ain't got nothing done out here today. It's after four o'clock. Uh I'm going to have to get this stuff. How am I going to do this? 
I don't want to lay it down. Well, I don't have a saw anymore, Dad. Going it. How am I gonna do? Well, I know how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> what where in the world that dad gone printer come from? Well, let me go around there with a piece of this and see what how that's gonna come out. I could get on my, no, I'd be quicker to use my walker. Be quicker to use my walker. I want to see. And what I had in mind was to make some sides up on that. And uh, that's going to work pretty good. Yeah, I used to get a lot of this stuff from them. I used to sell it at the flea market for a dollar a piece. And that means if I could get a whole pallet of that, usually that stuff won't sit out there. It won't make it through the day. Um, they'll, uh, gosh, I, this cold weather has got me stopped, folks. It's not too bad right now, but boy, it was, it was down almost to freezing this morning. Uh, man, every time I look at what this guy left over here, I just really get upset. I was wanting that gone. And right here, here, that's an aluminum umbrella pole. That's two steel bed rails. And he even left that. So what kind of scrapper is that? You know? He must not know what he's doing. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get with my family and we're gonna Clean this front yard up and rake it up and stuff. Sometimes you can get some real heavy pieces of plywood from that place. And I was I was talking to that guy that sets that pallet out there. I was going to cut a deal with him and my neighbor just got a pickup truck to call me when he's got a load, a pallet full that he's going to set out to call me and let me know and then I'm gonna get my neighbor to go over there and he would just set that whole pallet right on my uh right on my on my friend's truck and bring it over here but I wasn't really set up for it anyway. Of course back then I was building a lot of wood crafts and stuff and uh and I was gonna start going to the flea market and get me a booth permanent because you people buy this stuff right and left you know for little small projects they got 
and um, they pay they pay a piece like this they pay fifty cents for a piece like that they'll pay a dollar and some of that other stuff that's about twice as wide as this uh, they'd pay a couple dollars for it. They got a little project or something and they don't <coughs> they don't need a whole sheet and you know you can pay $20 and up for a sheet of plywood anymore even for the thin stuff Now, now I can, uh, set this Just about fell. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, I hate this. You know what? Somebody told me if I would lose this pot, that my lower back would probably quit hurting. Now, what I plan on doing is putting sides on this table and a little bit of a lip here uh, and make this my can table for crushing cans and then I'll mount my piece over there that uh, Wendy from Holland gave me um I may even pour oil on the used motor oil on this table to kind of help preserve it longer um but that's my plan um uh, Matter of fact, this plywood right here, that came from that same place. Sure enough. Sure enough. Anyhow, here we go. All right, I'm almost, well, that's probably all gone by now. Oh. Printer. Has somebody come back here and set that thing there? My scooter has not been out today. I'll tell you right now, folks, it's been a I should have brought that little tripod out here where I could set this camera up. I didn't do it. Um, 
I'm going to set this down there. All right. I got something I want to talk about. People have heard me talk about. Well, hold on. I don't like doing, I don't like my hair's all messed up. So there goes my, <laughs> there goes my ridiculous hat. Uh, people keep asking questions, they don't understand. I'm talking about my home life, then I'm talking about my home place. I want to go back one more time. And they said they didn't think I really had a home place. Well, here's the deal, folks. Uh, from the time I was born, almost from the time I was born, my mom and dad, I was born in 41. My mom and dad moved to Norfolk, Virginia in 42 or 43, I'm not sure which, that was during World War II. And he went to work at the shipyard. He was a welder and I think he was a ship fitter or something like that. But he worked at the shipyard. That's why he didn't go into the, they didn't draft him or anything. Uh, he, he uh, uh, worked at the shipyard. We lived in a, I guess you could call it a housing part. They built it. They built it in a hurry, and it was for all the uh, navy personnel and 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 uh, people that worked at the shipyards and stuff. And it was called Broad Creek Village. And uh, ah. <laughs> I can't remember the first apartment of the house. Actually, it's two houses put together. In, well, it's not like it's like uh, 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 <laughs> what do you got? duplexes. But you could tell it was. Uh, I'm matter of fact, I'll even put a picture in here of the house that I lived in. Um, I got a picture of it, um, the back side of it anyway. And that's what we lived in. The address was 1331 Northwood Mountain <laughs> Avenue. And it's in Norfolk, Virginia. And that's where we lived up until 1951 and I don't know when my dad moved out of that night because Mother's Day of 1951 my dad come in drunk and he come in drunk a lot he was an alcoholic and they got into a big argument again like they always do and uh whew, and he liked to throw dishes when he was like that I remember that. Uh, I was 10. I was 10 years old. I was 10 years and a couple, three months. Because this was Mother's Day of 1951. And he passed out in the living room. He was laying on the floor. Mama put a pillar under his head. I remember that. She put a pillar under his head. And she left uh for a few minutes and she come back with this man i didn't know him I, the man's son i played with a lot over on the railroad tracks but the man's man was robert william folks jr so undoubtedly, Mom and him been having an affair, and he was married and had a son at home, of course. So all of a sudden, 
she got some paper bags and put some of our clothes in the paper bags and stuff. And we all got in this man's car. And this was in the middle of the night now. And we drove to Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. That's about 100 miles. It, was not, it might even not be 100 miles. You know, Norfolk's pretty close to the state line there with North Carolina and Roanoke Rapids is right there on the state line. And they loaded us up, took us to Roanoke Rapids, the five of us. It was myself, my sister, a year younger than me, and my other brother was two years younger than my sister. And then we had another uh, two brothers, Michael and Joe. They were like toddlers. But as we was going, <sighs> I wish I wouldn't have to yawn. But as if we was going to North Carolina, and I'm the oldest, and my brother George heard this too. My sister, she was sleeping. She and the babies were sleeping. And they was discussing what to do with some of us kids. He could, said, we can't take them all. So we're, I'm like thinking, well, what are they going to do with us? And I, I was thinking, are they going to take us out in the woods and drop us off or kill us or something? You know, I was thinking this. And that that night my life changed. My, my childhood changed. I, I no longer had a family, a normal family, you know, but, but they went to North Ronald Rapids. They first went to my mother's mother, my grandma on my mama's side, and grandma, and she was trying to leave me and Carolyn and George, the three oldest, with her mother, and her mother wouldn't have no part of it, and she chewed her out, and you, you take your kids with you, and blah, 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 and all this stuff. So they left, and that's the last time she's seen her mama alive. Oh, uh, and she went across town to my daddy's mom, my grandma Pearson. Oh, uh, and she didn't ask her nothing. She didn't even talk to her. She just pulled up long, a little bit off the road into the driveway and told us me and Carol and George to go knock on the door at Grandma's and go on in there and stay with Grandma. I said, I'll see you in a few days. And that's what she did. Grandma didn't know what was going on. So all she knows, we were standing there and Mom and, and that Bob took off. So at the time, I didn't think that was traumatic or anything, I guess I really couldn't realize exactly what was going on. But uh, she took off. And that's the last time we saw Mama for about three years. Her and that man, Bob, went to, went to Jacksonville, Florida. And didn't nobody know where they were at. And we went back and stayed with Daddy just a little bit uh, at at that house in Norfolk. And something happened that night. Uh, Daddy left me, Carolyn, and George there at the house one night. He's out drinking. And he had left a cigarette or something smoldering on the... Uh, couch or sofa and the neighbors seen or smell smoke and they got looking and they called the fire department and the fire department come busting in and there was just us kids there me the me ten Carolyn nine and George seven I believe so they took us 
to a foster home of somehow or another, and I don't know what transpired. I know Daddy wasn't there, and I guess when he come home, he might have been arrested. I don't know. But I can't remember a whole lot. Uh, for the next two or three years, I, I can remember staying at aunts and uncles a lot and working on the farm. And sometimes I would be out in the field chopping cotton or corn, you know, chopping, you chop weeds out and everything and just working on the farm on them long, I mean, man, some of them rows were so long, and I'd be out there chopping, and I'd see a car coming down the old dirt road that looked like that man's, and it, that, it, was, a 40, it was a 49 Buick, and uh, <laughs> blue, and I got to thinking, is that mama coming to get me? Boy, I wish Mom would come get me. Uh, but at, at the time, I still didn't feel traumatized by it. I don't know if I feel traumatized now or not. But the point I'm trying to make, guys, is my home life was destroyed. You know, my family life and everything. And we did wind up with Mama and that man in 1955 when I was about 14 or 15, something like that. And we were staying with her and, and the man, and uh, I didn't like the man, you know, and he had this habit of you'd do something wrong and he'd sit there and he'd be talking, do you understand me? And punching you in the head with his finger and stuff like that. And one time I, he started punching me and I started punching him back on his head. And here come mama and she picked up a frying pan and here she come after me and I run out the back door onto the back porch, uh, which is pretty good side back porch, and it was upstairs, and there was stairs there and everything, and she had clothes hanging on a line out there she had washed. And I got to running in and out between them clothes, and pretty soon she co-cocked me on top of my head with that frying pan. I think I probably had a concussion. I don't know. But she got me good for for hitting Bob, you know. Uh, but after that, Bob didn't punch me in the head no more because I, I done got big enough. I could do some damage. But that's kind of my home life, you know. And, and, and But after that, I, I was back and forth. I would go with Dad, and I would come back to Mama's and all that stuff. And 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 uh, I was with Daddy when I was 16. I got my driver's license, and I got hurt on the job, and I got some insurance money off of that and had an operation. And uh, so I bought me a car and all that stuff. Uh, but... I'll tell you about the car deal in another video, but that's, that was my home or home life, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I wonder if I got a drink. No, I sure don't. But, but the reason I talk, in my other video, I was talking about going back home. When I, when I got out of the army, when I joined the army, I was at, I was with Mom at Jacksonville, and I'd been there a few months. And when I hit eighteen, uh, I I joined the day I was eighteen, and uh, and March I was eighteen on March fourth, and March eighteenth I was sworn in, and on that train and out of there. 
And I had the time of my life, uh, the time I was in the Army. Oh, uh, I, I did, I, I really did. And I had this girlfriend over there, she was German and, and of course, we made a baby that I didn't know anything about till about six years ago. I had no idea she was uh, with child when I left Germany. No idea. And I wouldn't know to this day if I hadn't look, kept looking on the internet and everything and I found them. <coughs> Problem is, she died three days after I found her again. She died three days after I had talked to her. And her brother had died just a couple of months before. And her brother was a good friend of mine. Uh, he died from cancer, and Renata died uh, from cancer. Uh, yeah, well, I, maybe I am a little bit traumatized, but I had no idea, and uh, Matter of fact, I left out a part there about my, I won't even get into that to another video, but uh, when I got back home and got out of the army, a friend of mine that was in the army had a girlfriend. And this girlfriend was, was my wife's, one of my wife's older sisters and he, that's how I met my wife, and I looked, I mean, when I got out of the Army, I looked her up. And I had wrote her and stuff back when I was in the Army, and while well, it's, uh, uh, I'm going to have to keep a hat out here, I don't have to wear this stupid thing. Oh, uh, but... I went up, the first time I went up there was in, I can't remember the year, but I'd never been in the mountains. And I got up there and I actually just fell in love with that family and living up there in the mountains. And we got married and all that stuff. And for a while we lived in her, with her mama and dad and her baby sister and her baby brother. and. The sister over her. Uh, but that's to me is that's the first time in my life I ever was in a family situation where everybody loved everybody and it was just it just mashed, you know, it just went together. Uh, And I longed for them days so much. And that's how I got started on that video the other day, that I just want to go home one more time. And my daughter said that it met me. One of my daughters, why do you want to go? I said, memories. And she said, all it's going to do is depress you. You know, and I just want to go home one time, one more time. And just soak it all in. And I'm not talking about going to town and another subscriber of mine made a comment, well, you can never go back. It, it, nothing, everything's changed, it's not the same. Well, for me, nothing has changed. That house is still up there in that holler up between two mountains, you got a branch running down one side, you got a big spring on one side and another big spring down by the driveway and stuff like that. The house is still there, the beds, is, everything's still there. The only thing that's different, cause the first time I went up there, there was no bathroom. You had to go out there on that little Johnny house. Uh, uh, and that Johnny house wasn't sitting over a hole, it was sitting on some logs straddled the branch and 
when you went and used the Johnny house, it it flushed all the time because it was the branch was running under there. Almost cold, almost enough branch water running that it could you could feel it spraying your butt. <laughs> oh, they, they, that's different. They 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 outlawed that. Uh, they they finally outlawed it, but. Back then, all the sewage, everybody's sewage run into creeks and branches and into the river. The, the school, uh, wasn't a big school, but it was a schoolhouse and all of its raw sewage run into the river, Nanahale River. Um, that school, so I'll give you an idea how big it was. My, my wife's uh, senior class, there was only 12, 12 students. And they all graduated, uh, but it's the same, you know. It's sitting there. The house is sitting there, and I know if I could go back and sit in there one time, all the memories would come. <sighs> Sakes alive! I. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know, you know, I, I'm just trying to explain why that's home to me. I lived up there 20 years. 20 years, you know, and, 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 and my, my wife's bedroom there, that, that was the bedroom I was stayed in after we got married. And, you know, the, there's a, a dresser and a chest in a bed frame and everything that's um, well made and it was a hand-me-down from some other neighbor. And my, when my wife figured I was coming up there, she wanted to fix that up where it looked nice and she stripped it all down and antiqued it, kind of a brown, brownish, bronze, bronzish color and that's still there and I would love to have that here but I uh, uh, oh man <laughs> stupid old man <laughs> oh gosh uh, but it's all there but the house is there I'm not talking about the town forget the town when you're coming up the driveway, it's a quarter mile long, and it's 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 coming up, and it crosses the branch. That branch is coming down the mountain. It runs across the road twice. Well, it doesn't run across it anymore. They finally built them a little log bridge thing there, but it you know that's just the kind of place it is. The the water coming into the house there's running water in there and the water comes from a from, from another branch up at the head of a branch they got a big spring box made there and it fills up with water and all that's piped down to the house uh, probably about probably about uh oh gosh that's probably a hundred yards or more and I, I, if you ever got up, if you ever went in there, you would probably think, poor folks, that would be right. But then you would probably just love the place just for what it is, you know, and just... Uh, And my my wife, she can remember when they finally got electricity in there. And uh, uh, they used to use oil lamps and stuff, you know. It's just that kind of, I, I, that was, that was the happiest time in my life was them years I spent up there. And I spent probably seven years up there before I ever went back and seen any of my family. 
but that friends that is home it's home and I guess that's all I got to say about that <laughs> I just want to explain people couldn't understand actually what when I'm talking about home and stuff where I'm talking about and that that's where I'm talking about and I feel like an old fool, you know. I can sit here and I can get emotional just thinking about it. Uh, but you know what? Thank, thank God. I've got my daughter and my three grandsons here. And I've got you guys. Thank God for that. I am not uh, 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 I'm not an alone person. I I I just couldn't, you know. <laughs> if I was alone, guess what? <laughs> you better believe. It. Maybe not that way, but I'd figure something out. I I couldn't. I can't. I can't be alone. I cannot be alone. That just scares me to death. Think about it. And I see some of these old folks walking around here, and they're. That I just like Lucille. She's by herself. I could. I don't see how she stands that. And I worry about something happening to her, and then not nobody realizing it for days. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to get emotional, folks. I I really didn't. But that's home. And I want to go one more time. And my sister-in-law is talking about it, but see, she lives in North. She don't live far from there. And uh, there's still family living in the house. It's just, it's just my niece lives there by herself. The my sister-in-law lived there up till Ma died. And then she went and got married. Well, no, she lived. My sister-in-law lived there with her husband, my brother-in-law Royce. They lived there, and and uh, uh, he worked as a caretaker of the old person's uh, home. And he come home one night and sit in the recliner and died. And that was before Ma died. Ma had Alzheimer's. And she, my sister-in-law was taking care of her. And then when Ma finally died, uh, she wound up getting married to somebody else. And uh, she moved out. Then there was nobody there. But but now my niece Diane or Sharon, uh, she lives there, and she's about uh, she's probably about sixty now. And I love that little old girl, Death. She, she was just, she was just a little bitty thing when I come into the family. Anyway, folks, I hope that kind of explains that. I, I'm gonna talk about some other things in my life, some depressing, some ridiculous. Uh, but. It's my life, <laughs> and that's basically what I want to show with my videos and stuff, my life and what's going on in my life and uh, stuff. So anyway, sorry to get emotional on you guys. I hate it. <laughs> I hope I'm going to get over this tonight. That's going to... 
I hope it warms up tomorrow. It's supposed to get up to 70. So that'll be neat. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, guys and gals. <laughs> Bye. GoPro, stop recording.